In this lesson, we're going to look at some of the most important and basic tools of modeling. So let's just jump right into it by selecting the default cube and hitting tab to go into edit mode. And first, let's look at some of our tools in the toolbar. We have all these icons on the left, which is great. But if you don't know what they mean, then that's not going to be super helpful. So what I'll do is hover my mouse right over the right side of the toolbar until I get the double arrows. Then I can pull it out to the right, and that way I have the names of everything as well. The first one we're going to look at is extrude region. 3D modeling is pretty cool because some of the techniques have no real analogy to the real world and wouldn't make any sense if we were working with physical materials. But since we're just working with vertices, edges, and faces, then we have a lot more flexibility on how we work. Extrude is a perfect example of that. What it does is essentially creates a copy, moves it, and then attaches it back to the original. So first, let's try this on just a single vertex. To use the tool, I just need to click and drag on our little yellow widget here. And that's going to pull it out along the vertex as normal. Or I can do the exact same thing while clicking and dragging on the white circle around it, which will allow me to move it around freely. But now you'll see that it just duplicated it and attached it back to the original. Let's do that one more time just to be sure. This time I'll use the white circle so I can place it wherever I want. I'll left click and drag. You can see it created a duplicate. Now I'm moving it around. Release the left mouse button to place it. And there we go. I'll hit control Z to undo that. And now let's do this on an edge. We could either just select two vertices and then again use the little yellow widget to pull it out along the normal of the edge. Or I could also do that exact same thing in edge select mode. I'll hit two to go to edge select mode, select an edge and extrude this outwards. You'll notice that even though I'm in vertex select mode, it'll extrude the whole edge and fill a face in between. When I extrude a vertex by itself, it'll fill an edge in between. When I extrude a face though, it will delete the original and then attach all of the sides. So let's go to face select mode here, select a face, and then just extrude this outwards. So again, it just creates a copy, attaches it to the original, and then when we're extruding a face, the inside face has been deleted. So if I zoom into our cube here and just look inside, that original face is no longer there. Even though this is something that we really can't do with physical materials in the real world, it makes total sense for 3D modeling, and it's gonna be one of the most common things that you use. So there's a really quick hotkey for it, and that is E. So let me just go back to my basic move tool here. And instead of using the extrude tool, I'll just hit E on my keyboard. That'll extrude it up and along the normal. Then I have to left click again in order to place it. Let's do that one more time. Left click a face, hit E to extrude, move your mouse, left click to confirm. Now, when we were talking about duplicating things, I mentioned that hitting escape while you're moving it will cancel the movement, but not the operation itself. And this is very true when it comes to extrusions. And this causes a lot of confusion specifically for beginners. So I really want to point that out here. If I hit E to extrude and pull this out and then realize, oh, I want to cancel this extrusion. So before I confirm this, I'll hit escape on my keyboard. And now it looks like I've canceled it. But in fact, now I just have two faces sitting directly on top of each other. And this can cause a lot of problems if we don't notice it. So that's something to be very aware of is that canceling it will only cancel the movement and we still have that extra face here. So if you really do need to cancel something, what I would recommend is just confirming it and then hitting control Z to step backwards. That'll be a little bit more of a reliable way to go about it, just so you don't forget. Now on the button for the extrude region tool, we have this little triangle, meaning that there's more tools inside of here if we left click and hold. So we have extrude region, extrude manifold, extrude along normals, extrude individual and extrude to cursor. All of these are super fun to work with and I would recommend playing with them, but we'll talk a lot more about all of them in the fundamentals of mesh modeling. So for now, I just wanna do a basic overview of some of the basic tools, but to really dive deep into all of them, I would recommend going on to that course next. Underneath extrude region, we have inset faces. So this is kind of like an extrusion, but then it scales it inwards. So let's just left click and drag on this yellow circle here. And you can see that we've essentially, well, inset our face. This really is the exact same thing as if we select a face, hit E to extrude, left click to cancel right away. So the extrusion is still there, but we just haven't moved it. And if I hit S to scale this down, you know, we'll get the exact same result. But this is really useful because it works even in places where scale will kind of mess up. So for example, let's say we want to inset this whole shape here and let's curve it around the cube here. If I hit I to inset, you know, we'll get a perfect inset all the way around this shape. And maybe that's a bad example because we have that pole right there. So let me just hit control Z to undo that. Uh, let me just inset these three faces instead, just like that. And now we have a border of even thickness that goes all the way around this shape. Let me hit control Z and undo that. And let me show you what happens if I were to extrude that instead. 
If I hit E to extrude, left click to confirm, and try to scale this down, then I'd have to manually position this into place, and that would be very tedious, and I'd also not be able to actually get that border of even thickness all the way around. You can see I'd have to scale it out a little bit more, I'd have to take this edge, pull that out, and when you're working with things like curved surfaces and not just straight lines, then this becomes very, very complicated. So being able to quickly inset something is a great thing. Again, I'll go to face select mode, just take two faces, and then just click and drag on this yellow circle here. The hotkey for inset is I. So just select a face, hit I, move your mouse, and left click to confirm. If we open up the redo panel, which is in the bottom left, then we can adjust some of the properties of this. We can adjust the thickness, the depth, or whether or not it works on individual faces or all of the selected faces as a whole. If we want to do that, then maybe we just want to select several faces like this, I to inset, and then if you want to check on individual, then it'll just inset each face by itself. You can also change these properties in the middle of doing your operation before you hit left click to confirm. So let's say I want to extrude both of these faces individually, and I don't want to go down to my redo panel afterwards, then I can hit I, and while I'm doing that, then you'll notice a bunch of hotkeys that are displayed in the top left of my screen. If I try to move my mouse up there, it'll kind of mess up the faces there. But you can see in the top left, um, I can hit O for outset, B for boundary, I for individual. And again, we'll talk a lot more about all of these things in the fundamentals of mesh modeling. But for now, let's just hit I to turn off individual, and we can change any number of these parameters. Then when we're done, we can hit left click to confirm. It'll take a little bit to get used to all the hotkeys, so if you want to use the tool version of this, then by all means, definitely go for it. If you find yourself using the tool a lot though, that's when you'll probably want to switch to using the hotkeys because it's going to be so much faster. Next, I want to jump down a couple tools and go straight to the knife tool. Let's select that, and this is a way where you can just cut straight into your mesh. So let's say you want to split a face from one side to the other. Well, you can just left click on any edge, left click on another edge, and then hit enter to confirm. The knife will automatically snap to vertices and edges and cut anything in between. So let's say we want to create a vertical cut all the way from the top to the bottom here. Well, I'll just left click with my knife, go all the way down to the bottom, left click again, and you can keep creating cuts here if you want. You can just click all the way around, create whatever shapes you need to, just like so, and then hit enter to confirm. The one thing to keep in mind is that you can't create holes in the middle of your geometry. This is a feature that might be coming to Blender at some point in the future, but at the moment it just doesn't exist. So if you try to create a hole all the way by itself, just like this, I'll just place four points here, and then hit enter, then it will create it, but it'll also create additional connections just because of that limitation. But this is going to be a really freeform way to create whatever shape that you need to. So let's say you wanted to have a triangle hole in the middle of this shape. Well, one way that you could do it is to just draw a triangle here, hit enter, and then switch over to your extrude tool, select that face, and extrude it inwards. We'll talk a lot more about topology, or how your mesh is arranged, and why the number of sides of a face and all that stuff is important in the fundamentals of mesh modeling, but for now I wouldn't worry about that too much as you're just getting started with the tools. Go ahead and play around with extrude, inset, and the knife tool, and see if you can find a way to use all of them together. It doesn't really matter what you make at this point, you don't have to make anything specific, you can just kind of doodle around like I'm doing here, but just get comfortable with the tools and see how they work. Oh, and I did forget to mention the hotkey for the knife tool, which if I just go back to my box select tool, is K. So instead of switching over to the knife tool, I'll often just hit K on my keyboard, place a point, place another point, and then whenever I'm done, hit enter. Okay, so that's it for the first round of tools. In the next video, we'll talk about a few more.